Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about Project One Minesweeper of CS50 Introduction to Artificial Intelligence with Python. So, if you want to have full support from programming experts, check the description below. And I would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have an alternative view about the project. We totally disencourage plagiarism. All right, so basically in this Minesweeper project, we're going to write an AI to play a Minesweeper where we're never going to lose, okay? Positional logic, the same idea that we used for the previous project nights, okay? And in here, we're gonna work with some things. So basically, we're gonna have a number of cells that we have available, okay? And we have uh, to play around checking when it's a mine or not. So basically, the board here in the mines is gonna give a number telling us how many mines we have in our in the neighbor of this cell, okay? Let's understand a little bit how it's gonna work by taking a look at this animation. Consider the following mine sweeper board where the middle cell has been revealed. We know that there is one mine around the middle cell. We can represent this with the sentence A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H equals to 1. Now, if we consider this board, we can tell that there are no mines on the cell E, D, and G because they are the only neighbors of the cell 0. So we would represent by doing D, E, G equals to 0. We have something similar in this board, but now instead of no mines, we know that E, F, and H are mines because 3 is the number of neighbors that the cell has. In this case, we would represent by doing EFH equals to 3. Consider just the two sentences our AI would know based on the top middle cell and the bottom middle cell from this board now. From the top middle cell, we can have ABC equals to 1. From the bottom middle cell, we have ABCDE equals to 2. Logically, we could then infer a new piece of knowledge that DE equals to 1. After all, if true of A, B, C, D, and E are mines, and only A, B, and C are mines, then it stands to reason that exactly one of D and E must be the other mine. So now let's just start working with the things we have to implement, okay? So basically in here, I already opened it up, I already extracted the folder in my VS Code, and I ran this command here, pip3 install r requirements, because we need to install the py game, uh, the py game library to work in here, okay? This py game in here. All right, we're gonna work with the Minesweeper uh, file, and basically in here we're creating a class for the Minesweeper game representation. And the first thing we're gonna work with this sentence, okay? Basically, what do we have? We have a self cell, so it's gonna give us the cells that we have in our board. The self count will count how many mines we have in our board, okay? And now we have to implement this idea of no mine. So let's see. The no mines function should return a set of all of the cells in self cells that are known to be mines. So when we know it's a mine, we know that it's a mine if the length of self dot cells it's equals to the self dot count. So if the same numbers of cells that we have available is equal to the same number of counts, so if we have four mines and four cells, this means that these mines are in these cells. But we also have to give another condition because if self count is zero, and self cells is zero. So here it means that we have no mines, but we have no boards as well. And here it might have a conflict. So here we're gonna say self dot count is different than zero, okay? And if we're gonna do this, we're gonna return self.cells, okay? Because this self.cells, it's a set of all cells that are available. We kind of initialize it in here, this self.cells, it's the set of all cells available. And otherwise, if this, is if this is not true, we're gonna return an empty set, okay? Because we don't know how many mines we have. Now let's go for the known safe. So this function should return a set of all the cells in self-cells that are known to be safe. So when we know it's safe, we know that it's safe. The only case we know that it's safe that we can say for sure that it's safe, it's when we have no uh, count anymore, if our count is equal to zero. So here, if self.count is equals equals zero, this means that we don't have any mine anymore, so we are safe. So here we can return the self.cells. Otherwise, we're gonna return an empty set. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Now the mark mine. We need first to check if the cell we're looking for is a cell included in the sentence. So to do this in here, we're gonna do if 
cell. So we're here cell, it's, a, it's the cell we're receiving as a function. In self.cell, self.cell is all the available cells we have in here. So first we need to check this. Then what are we gonna do? If cell is the sentence, is in the sentence, the function should update the sentence so the cell is no longer in the sentence, but it still represents a logically correct sentence for the given cell is known to be a mine. So basically here we're gonna remove the cell from our cells that we have available. So we're gonna do self.cells.remove and what do we wanna remove? Cell. One thing that is important to do is we need to keep track of the, uh, the mines that we have in our mind. So here we're gonna do a self.count minus equals one. So we know that we have this cell in here, so we don't need to count this cell anymore. So here we're gonna do self.count minus equals one. And we don't need to do anything else in the case of the sentence is not if the cell is not in the sentence. All right. Now for the mark safe, we need to check again if it's in the sentence. So here we're gonna do again if cell in self dot cells. And then we need to check no longer is the sentence. Here's the same idea, but we don't need to remove anything from the self count. So here we're just gonna do self dot cells dot remove cell. We're just gonna we're just telling that this cell is not available anymore. Okay. So so far so good. The easiest part we just did. Now we're gonna work with the hardest part that working with the Minesweeper AI. Now we're gonna make the player our computer not losing anymore. Okay. So here in the mark mine, we're adding uh, we're marking a cell as a mine and update all knowledge to mark that cell as a mine. We mark safe. It's doing the, the same thing but marking that it's safe. Now we're gonna work with the add knowledge, make safe move and make random move, okay? So let's see what we have in here. So actually we're not gonna start with the add knowledge because it's kind of huge. Let's start with the make safe move, okay? So basically we should return a move ij that is known to be safe. The move return must be known to be safe and not a move already made. So basically we have to check all the available safe moves we have and then we're gonna check if we can if we can do this move or not. If no move safe, if no safe move can be guaranteed, the function should return it. And we should not modify the self moves made, moves made, self mind, self made, self saves, and self knowledge. So basically, the self saves, let's see in here the self saves. Where it is? Self saves. So basically the self saves, we keep track of all the safe cells that we can do, okay? And the moves made will keep track of all the moves we already did. So basically if to do a safe move, we're gonna look through all the cells we have in the self saves. So for cell in self.saves, because here we know that it's a safe move, all right? Then we need to check if it's available move or not. So if cell in, and here we can use this move made, all right, where it is, move made, move, let's see here, the self of moves made, moves made. So the moves made will keep track of all the cells that have been clicked on. So now we need to check if the cell we're looping here is available or not. So if cell in self dot moves made, then we're gonna return this cell, okay? And basically this cell, it's already an IJ that they are telling us to do. So here return cell. Otherwise, if after doing all of this loop, we still don't have any safe move, we're gonna return none. Okay, here they're telling us, if we can't guarantee that it's a safe move, we're gonna return none. So if all of, after this for loop, we still don't have a safe move that it's available, we're gonna return none. All right, this is pretty much what we're gonna do in here. So now we're gonna make the make random move. So basically here, we're gonna make a random move ij, and this function will be called if a safe mode is not possible, okay? So if the previous function make safe move return none, we're gonna call the make random move to make a random move. And in this case, if the AI lose, it's okay because it was a random move, all right? Then we're gonna, the move must not be a move that has already been made. So we need to check if it's a, an available move using the moves made. And it must not be a move that is known to be a mine. So we need to check both things. If no, such moves are possible, then we should return it. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna create a list, so possible moves. I'm gonna create a list. And in this list, I wanna append all the possible moves, okay? And then we're gonna use the random dot choice to select one element of this random move. Then we're gonna loop through all the all the rows. So we're gonna do for i in the width. And then we're gonna look for all the columns we have in our mind sweeper. So for i in. And if you take a look in here, we have a self dot height that will tell us the height. So how many rows we have and the self dot width that tells how many columns we have. Okay, so for i in range self dot height. And then we're gonna do a nested loop for j in range self dot width. Okay, what are we gonna do? Now we need to check both things. We must need to check if this move is not already in the moves that has been made. So we're gonna do something similar to this if statement. So if i j not in self dot moves made, all right, and we also need to be sure that this move is not known to be a mine, okay? So we're gonna check if it's not in self.mines. So if i and j 
not in self dot minds all right so if this happens we're gonna append this mode in our list okay remember in the future we're gonna grab this list and we're gonna select a random element in here so we're gonna do possible moves dot append and here i want to append the tuple i j okay after all if we finish the for loop now we're gonna use this in here all right we're gonna check in here we're gonna use this random dot choice so first we need to check if the list is empty because if the list is empty this means that we don't have any possible choice so if possible ch length of possible ch possible moves is different than zero this means that we're gonna use this random choice. So how does random.choice works? Basically in here, we have a list, okay? And the random.choice will select one random element of this list. In here, it's printing banana, but in the next case, it can print any other thing. For example, here it's printing apple. So it will automatically change, choose one of those for us. So remember to first import random in the top of your code. I believe it's already have, great. Now we're gonna use here the choice. So what is the notation? Here we're gonna do, we're gonna return random, dot choice and one of the elements we have in our possible modes else so if our list is empty we're gonna return none because this means that we don't have any we don't have any possible move to do that it's safe or that it's unknown to be a mine okay so this is pretty much what we have to do in the random move now let's pay a closer attention here in the add knowledge because this is the hardest part of this mind sweeper and of course all of this mind sweeper is hard so don't be hard on yourself okay this is a hard project cs50 ai it's a hard course so let's see here so basically here let's start doing step by step okay because this will be key to do the logic of the propositional logic we're going to implement in here for the ai so far we, so far we were working with creating the tools of our to help us doing this part but right now this will be the core okay so let's Let's do step by step. So first, we're gonna get the function, we're gonna mark. So basically the idea is the following. We're gonna receive a cell, okay, represented by A and J, I and J, and its corresponding count. So basically we're gonna receive a cell and we're gonna see how many mines we have in the neighborhood, okay? Then we need to update the self mind, self saves, the moves made and the knowledge with any new information that the AI can infer with this new cell that we're working, okay? So basically now we're updating our AI with the, now that we click in the cell, we know what how many mines we have, the, the cell has a neighbor and we can work with this okay so the first thing we have to do is the function should mark the cell as one of the moves made in the game so first we're gonna get in here okay mark cell as one of the ma moves made in here basically actually i'm gonna read what is in here i think it's better okay so in here what are we gonna do first we're gonna use the self so we have to mark the cell as one move made so we're gonna add this cell in our moves made self dot moves made remember that the self dot moves made it's a set of all the the cells the moves that we already did and i'm gonna add this cell Okay. Then we need to mark the cell as safe because if we were able to click in the cell and the, the game wasn't over, this means that it is a safe cell. So we're going to do safe.mark uh, safe. 